Welcome everybody to GNU Presents Performance Feast, Artists in Community. Who's ready to feed your mind and nourish your heart? We seek to expand our grassroots community of connected artists by engaging in artistry-focused conversation. This series, is, see, this series is made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board, thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Tonight's special guest is VJ Rosales. VJ is the musical director of the pop a cappella quintet, the Philharmonic, a group that rose to fame as part of NBC's hit show, The Sing Off, in 2013. Since then, the Philharmonic has appeared on hundreds of college campuses nationwide, made their silver screen debut in Pitch Perfect 2, and drops in regularly on CBS's The Late Late Show with James Corden. A graduate of Cal State Long Beach's Bob Cole Conservatory of Music, VJ is a singer, songwriter, arranger, and music director who hails from Los Angeles. VJ teaches vocal music and is a beginning piano instructor at the LA Music Academy and the Silver Lake Conservatory. Please welcome VJ Rosales. And with him, GNU Artistic Director and Performance Feast host, Mo Field. Some quick housekeeping. You can change your zoom view up in the top right corner to side by side to see both panelists and the screen share. The chat function and Q&A will be available tonight. While using the chat function, please make sure to send it to panelists and attendees so that we can all can see it. Take it away, Mo. Hello, 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 hello. Great, Hi. wonderful. Hi, VJ. How are you? Good. Hello. 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 I'm good. The, the intro music is amazing. I was here like just jamming. <laughs> yeah, so good. How are you? I'm good. It's great. I've been looking forward to our session together. So this is really super cool. Yes, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. It's an honor. Oh, it's totally great to see you here. And I can't wait for us to get into some deep dives on some of these subjects on some of these videos. Yes. Um, so our friends out there can, you know, see what we've been geeking out on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. I'm so excited to do this with you. It's great. So. Right. So um, for those of you who are new to Performance Feast, uh, just a little bit of information. We're going to riff about stuff that we see and that we love, and we're going to get some deep diving in. We've already talked a little bit about the fact that we want to get into some arranging discussions as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're an arranger out there or an aspiring arranger, this is definitely you've come to the right place. As we start off, though, friends, I want you to understand exactly who VJ Rosales is. And the only way to really do that is to start seeing him in action. We're gonna start with a video of VJ and the Philharmonic doing a thing. It's pretty self-explanatory. Are you ready to rock and roll? Here we go. Mm. And please enjoy. Because there is a, a lot more to this too, but yeah. and it's a very good clip, but we only have an hour. So VJ, so tell us a little bit about that clip. So you're setting up to work with some two unknown people that you know are going to be um, improvising over top of something that is organized that you have to be responsive and improvising with them as well. So how does that impact you as a performer? Oh, it's huge. I mean, just being able to do something like this at, at this um, caliber of, you know, with an A-list celebrity and then like a TV host, it's just, it's crazy to think that I have this gig, you know? Right. Um, and it, and it's, it, it's incredible. And it really taught me a lot because, um, you know, you arrange for it and then you realize there are so many different layers um, coming into working for a TV show like that. So right. copyright and like, what are the performers going to actually do when it actually comes time to perform and everything is, scripted in a way but then in the end the like, actual performance comes out different yeah you have to keep that fairly loose at the same time and exactly. yet you're also balancing your entire group has clearly worked it out you're very rehearsed you're ready yeah. to go and and then you also all have to trust that you're all flexible at the same time for these two like working with like exactly. children or babe or children or animals <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly and like you said the rehearsal aspect of it too is is so intense it's because there's so many like moving you know parts um, mm. to it so it that that specific the reason why i wanted to showcase that one was because that was one of my favorite riff offs and it was also the hardest at the same time because theater music well, to arrange yeah. acapellas yeah it is because you've got to you've got to capture a lot of stuff now um i noticed you kept the root movements really kind of simple uh in mm -hmm. some areas but then there's just these real clusters of chords as well 
um, that you're working with and the styles of, of those songs, just the, the, the ones that we heard so far were really very, uh, very different, but you're still trying to keep it. Are you trying to keep it within the voice of what the, the Philharmonic does, or are you really trying to lift from um, the authenticity of the actual theater piece itself? What was your priority for that? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think both. I think obviously there's a balance there, but um, us being the Philharmonic, I wanted to keep that brand as well. So right. our main kind of brand is R&B pop. So we definitely like popified some of the theater uh, arrangements for sure. There were some yeah, riffs yeah. In there that aren't in the original that we had to have. So yeah, yeah. It's, a balance. it's a balance for sure. Yeah, that's, that's really, that's uh, great. So when you're sitting down to arrange this, you're keeping in mind, did you know when you were arranging this, which uh, performers were gonna be with you other than Corden? Did you know that it was gonna be Neil Patrick Harris? Yeah, and what's funny is that we, we did know it was gonna be Neil Patrick Harris. We were actually on a cruise ship. And so in order for Neil Patrick Harris to be able to rehearse these songs ahead of the show, we had to send all of these demos to him through cruise ship Wi-Fi, which was oh, no. <laughs> I know, it was crazy. But he, he ended up getting it. And so then we were able to rehearse correctly. And then when we got back on land, we rehearsed with him and it was great. So yeah. Yeah, no, that's super cool. Like what a great opportunity. How many of these rip offs have you done so far with Corden? Yeah, we've done nine so far. That's great. Yeah. What a great opportunity for you as, as a group, you know, to be able to, um, to get that exposure. Did the exposure change your group or does it, has it helped your group quite oh, a bit? Immensely. Yeah. Like we, we did Pitch Perfect 2 and then there was really nothing after that, but because of Pitch Perfect 2, that movie, it mm. launched us into doing that riff off. So without that performance, like we would become kind of irrelevant in a way, but the, the riff offs really keep us relevant and in, in, in the public eye. So it's cool. That's fantastic. Now for all of the arrangers that are watching us tonight, um, I just want to, I, I, I know I'm an arranger, you're an arranger and we've, you know, we've talked arrangement uh, many times before. Um, uh, I, I want all the arrangers out there to know that no matter what level you think you aren't at, you can do it. So when you get uh, the challenge and somebody says, oh, great, you're going to be on the James Corden show. And, you know, what goes through your mind as an arranger? It's like, okay, I get to do this now. <laughs> like for every, <laughs> every new thing that you get to do is like, well, that's daunting. Okay. I'm up for it. What kind of process do you go through as an arranger to talk yourself into, into your possibilities? Oh, ooh, that's a, that's a big one because first off all the nerves that come flushing in when you get that call from Corden, he's like, we want to do this. And from the producers, it's, it's really kind of scary at first, to be honest, you're like, whoa, can I really do this? Um, but then you think back on, you know, I, for me at least, I think back on all of my time, like in college, like spending time in theory and spending time learning counterpoint and mm -hmm. all of these different aspects of music and realizing that I learned that for a reason. It's to do gigs right. like this, you know, uh, you know, under pressure. So I'm super grateful for my education and I'm super grateful for these type of gigs that continue to challenge me Mm -hmm. kind of flex that arranging muscle that I love. That's flex. very cool. Yeah. And we're going to talk more about some of this stuff because uh, the life of an arranger, it's, it's a lonely pursuit because you're <laughs> the only one in the room that is having this stuff fall out of your head. And it is, yes. you, you just have to imagine what it's going to sound like, but we're going to, we're going to watch a couple other clips and then we're going to get back to that conversation. Uh, very exciting. I, I'm just loving what we're doing here. This is great. Okay. So here we go. Perfect. Stay tuned, everybody. Here we go. Hey, you! Yeah, I'm talking to you, sassy girl. Need a little ah in your step? Try this on for size. It's pop. It tastes great. It makes you feel kind of funny. Not here, not down there, but all up in this area. And coming July 24, 2001, Jumbo Pop. Jumbo Pop. Yo. BC. Sick and tired of hearing all these people talk about. What's the deal with this pop life and when is it gonna fade out? The thing you got to realize what we're doing is not a trend. We got the gift of melody, we're gonna bring it till the end. Come on now. Doesn't matter about the car I drive when I wear around my neck. All that matters is that you recognize that it's just about respect. It doesn't matter about the clothes I wear and where I go and why. All that matters is that you get hyped and we'll do it to you every time. Come on now. You ever wonder why? Get you high. It takes you on a ride. You feel it when your body starts to rise. Your body starts to rise. You can't stop. Dance now. Come on now. 
baby, you can't stop. I know you like this. Dirty pop. Now, why you wanna try to classify the type of thing that we do? Cause we're just fine doing what we like. Can we say the same for you? I'm tired of feeling all around me, animosity. Just worry about drugs, cause I'ma get mine. Now, people, can't you see? It doesn't matter. About the car I drive, or the ice around my neck. It's that you recognize that it's just about respect. It oh. About the clothes I wear and where I go and why. You get hyped and we do it to you every time, come on Nice. So, so classic, so classic. Uh, uh, yeah. It's hard to believe that's twenty years old. I know. That's that's crazy. That's, um, that is pretty amazing. Yeah. So, tell us why you chose this. Uh, this no, here's, I was. I was at first. I was like, "Oh, should I show this one?" But I, I was just trying to be real because honestly, I grew up listening to like boy bands and girl. You know, it was that era. Um, '90s R and B. I really listened to a lot, but. 2001, like that era was the time when I was like really starting to listen to, to pop music. And I just kind of wanted to showcase that because, you know, it just it just goes to show that like everyone kind of comes from a, a different place and you grow up listening to certain music and, oh, yeah. and that starts to influence what you do as an adult or just even as an arranger in general. So, you know, I listened to NSYNC and Backstreet Boys and all of those, those right? um, boy before and I, I find myself even when like creating harmonies and when my arrangements that all all like you know kind of filter back to those moments and be like oh that's such an in sync riff or like a boys to men run and, right right you know so so now yeah. the, the next question is like okay so this the uh, the harmonic idea of some of the boy bands especially like you know the late nineties like Backstreet Boys and saying all those guys those cats um. So all of this, like this certain kind of harmony that, that was trying to be compressed, like it was, it's a very compressed harmony yes. and it's a very tight harmony. There's not a lot of individual voices popping out except for the odd feature that's very much on purpose. It's a very right. blended and locked thing. But also on, on top of this, um, there's a lot, I think this, this song actually in a, in a small, in its own way is a bit of a clinic on a couple of things. One, when to end a note. Mm, like mm -hmm. it is so heavily subdivided and bop da do bop. Yeah. Like all of those hits, they're really tight shots. Totally. Super tight shots, actually. Yeah. Um, so now translating this into an a cappella realm, 
and you work with beatboxing um, in your group. So how much do you work on just when to stop singing a note so that the correct space and the rhythm is created by the absence of sound? Mm, wow, that's, yeah, I love that. Um, so yeah, the absence of sound. So like even just going, getting down to the nitty gritty of like how long an eighth note actually is, like value in value, like, in acapella, an eighth note actually should be longer than it actually should be. Like holding out notes a little longer for the chord to like actual, um, actually like establish, you know, that's right. important in acapella. So if you take an instinct song and you're lis listening to all these hits, they're actually, they seem fast, but to the human voice, actually in acapella, it translates to longer. So like if you hear an right. eighth note in an instinct tune, that's actually going to be like a quarter note. Like it's going to actually double because you want that chord to establish. Right. So those Absolutely. are certain things I'm thinking about, you know. So when you're writing uh, music, like I, I quite often in my charts, I will end up uh, writing um, because you have, I write for a variety of people. You write for your group primarily. Do you write for primarily. other groups as well? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Primarily. Okay. So uh, you have the opportunity to explain to them or you already know how to work together. But I find that when I'm writing the charts out, um, if I'm too specific about exactly how long or short things go, people just get confused by what do you mean a 16th rest? Um, you know, they're just like, they don't know what to do with it. But I find often that I have to end up indicating um, eighth notes dotted as dotted eighth notes, just so that that establishment and length can be yeah. there. Do you find that that's uh, yeah. something you have to direct yeah. the group into No, a little bit longer on this? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely that. And, and that also goes to thinking like, you may think something sounds like something first, and then you have to change it in the sheet music to make it to, to for people to interpret it correctly. Right. So just like that idea. And it takes it takes actually more work because that see, that's the beauty of arranging. And yeah, like, you'll you'll put something down on paper, and then it doesn't quite translate in real life. And then you have to like change it and, and modify it constantly. I'm so. finding that as well yeah. for myself. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm going to slip in here one of my, uh, one of my favorite, uh, boy bands actually that okay. I just, and I really love this song. Uh, Ooh, I'm so excited. What is it? I, I'm, I, you, you probably know this. And if you don't, I'm, I'm happy to be the person that has delivered you, uh, some K-pop. This is, Ooh. uh, <laughs> this is, is I just, love I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. You can take a guess. B there's, I only know two BTS and shiny. There's like oh, this is shiny. Yay! Yay! I love shiny. I know they're so amazing. Okay, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> this is great. I got to go. 
so amazing they're they, so great they really are and like what a great live performance they're clearly using their microphones they're clearly yeah. like singing, uh and and moving and just so genuine and the crowd is so with them like that audience rapport that they have and, yes. and they, they lead right into it mm -hmm. um, and they're awfully really hot they're just hot they, yeah right <laughs> <laughs> Very, very much so. And I'm, I'm like, I'm looking at them. They, I'm not sure if they're like cute girls or <laughs> it's just so, so beautiful. Um, um, yeah, just but the rapport that they have with their audience is just so. Um, they're so there for the fans, and they're not afraid of accepting that um, that community. And actually, the lyrics of this song, uh, we don't really have time to go over, but. Folks, go and look up Love Sick by Shiny and look at the, the uh, translation of the words. Maybe somebody, one of our friends can do that and put it in the chat. They're adorable. The, yeah. the words of this are just so adorable. Oh, I love that. It's crazy, Mo, because like, honestly, I didn't know about Shiny until last weekend. Oh, really? Yeah, my friend is a huge fan. They still do concerts. They did a virtual <laughs> concert recently and yeah. she introduced it to me and they're amazing. They are totally amazing. One of the original members um, passed away. I know, um, I heard about that. Yeah, which was pretty sad, but uh, yeah, what a great group and okay. great vocalists and, and such unique, like when they all step out to take their solos, such different voices, but they work so well together. Exactly, and that's, that's what I love to model the Philharmonic after, like individual voices, but then together we blend correctly. So like that's, that's the ultimate. You know, yeah, so. it's a compliment. Well, you gotta have big ears to sing, sing, uh, sing um, this sort of stuff. Like a lot of the people that watch us are in acapella music. Um, yeah, color me bad. Somebody's mentioning color me bad in the chat. Oh, yeah, color me bad. I think, uh, yeah. yeah, color me bad was like one of the. I think they really kicked off a whole new way of thinking of things um, in the '90s. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it was is pretty good. Now, unfortunately, and you know what, we're gonna have to find like another night for us to do this Wait. again because there's so much we won't get yeah, to cover. We are going. Oh yes, SWV. Someone mentioned. Um, oh yeah, SWV for sure, for sure. Right. Yes. Yes. Yes, Peter. Nice. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so now um, I'm thinking of what direction we want to go on. Do you have off of your list one of the things that you'd like to go with next? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, maybe the jazz, the New York Voices one. Okay, yeah, I was thinking on a clear day. Okay, yeah. You want to go for that? Let's, Let's do, do this. So we might we might stop this particular performance a little early just so we can fit in all the other things that we want to watch as well. But Definitely. friends, um, I, and here's a little uh, sidestep. I was when I was in college. Um, New York Voices came to Vancouver, where I went to college, and they did a huge like vocal jazz arranging workshop with us. It was really cool. Yeah, it was back when when he had the long ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, Darman. You're talking about Darman Meter. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love. I mean, I love their group. I've been a fan for so long, and that's so great. Yeah, I did a vocal jazz workshop with them too, and they're incredible. So. Yeah, they are, and they're really great teachers. Yes. Um, really great teachers as well and a lot of people don't really know about new york voices because they are so they are so jazz yeah um that a lot of acapella they're they're kind of in their own acapella world and a lot of actually jazz groups that we won't get a chance to really catalog tonight unfortunately like lambert hendricks and ross right right you know uh the four freshmen uh yeah. the high lows gene the high lows. Oh, high 
you know, uh, there's a bunch that we could uh, go on so, on our on our version two of the VJ. The real logo. group. There's so many more. There's so many more. I know. I know. It's like <laughs> I know the real group. I I've seen them like do a Christmas concert on roller skates. It's amazing. Like there's just so wow. many great. Yeah, Rioton of a Finnish group. There's just so many great acapella groups out there. We will not get a chance to cover all of them tonight, but. Friends, if you want VJ to come back and we can do more of this, <laughs> yeah, just yeah, like <laughs> just put it in the chat and we will try and make this so because there is too much to cover in one hour. So much, yes. So for now, friends, dear friends, we are going to the New York Voices and hey. please enjoy this. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the New York Voices.
good that it's, is such a heavy chart it's yeah that's yeah it's a great chart, it's a great chart. I, I love that they're they're not, they're not using in ears they're just using floor monitors uh yeah. there's a band blasting behind them mm -hmm. and they're just like and it's there's so much vocal control you know mm -hmm. in order to sing those really dissonant chords like you gotta be thinking the whole time and it's great it's so good you gotta love living inside the chord in order to sing that kind of stuff um yeah. have you sung much vocal jazz Yes, I mean, that's basically my major. I, I went to school yeah. doing, and I, I did jazz studies, but I was able to be a part of a group called um, Pacific Standard Time, which was our main vocal jazz group there, and I sung in it for five years. So right. that, really, I mean, jazz has really expanded the horizons in terms of like my arranging and my music skills. Like learn jazz and you learn everything. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, again, I studied, I studied jazz as well and, uh, and was in, you know, that college group as well, you know, the oh. eight, eight voice group. And, uh, you know, I love doing things like singing Green Dolphin Street in seven. Yeah, you know? totally. And that's another thing I loved about this chart, how fluidly they moved in and out of six, eight and into four, four time. And just like it was supposed to be there and that feel it, they led with the feel and the arrangement led them into the feel. Exactly. It yeah. was so so easy easily done totally and that's that's honestly all of my arranging tricks have come from vocal jazz and being able to switch grooves and all of those right. amazing things yeah i mean that really though that's i feel i contribute that a lot like my, a pop song is a pop song but enable you know when you're able to like kind of infuse jazz like knowledge into it it's so cool when you're able to do that effectively it, it it completely is and you know arranging jazz the first chart that i ever arranged actually was a jazz chart and um i was really nervous to do it because i didn't think i had the skill to really pull it off and it was fly me to the moon um mm -hmm. in a medley with east of the sun west of the moon with a scat soldier i mean when i when i said i, I was nervous to, to do my first chart i had been brewing on it probably subconsciously for so long that when it popped out it was it was a monster <laughs> It's like it yeah. start small, but I can say that a lot of that came from, I didn't really think about a lot of the theory. I just like, it has to, it has to feel this way. And the feel of the chord is yeah. a sound and how much, and my question to you is how much do you sit down to arrange something and you go, it has to feel this way. And this is the sound that it is and figure out the theory secondary. That's really great. Yeah. I, I think that was an ongoing process when, you know, mm -hmm. right after you graduate from college, you're, there's so many things going through your mind, like theory, you've learned the theory, you, you're kind of in a way kind of trapped in a box and, mm -hmm. and you know, and oh. so you have to kind of learn as you go that you have to trust your instincts first and then right. apply the theory afterwards. And that's what I'm- People, I've are you hearing this? Arrangers, are you hearing this out there? <laughs> yeah, like, so yes, you can totally apply theory first and that's great, there's nothing wrong with that. But in order to really truly capture a good arrangement, you have to go with instinctual like process first and then be like, this is, this feels good to me. This sounds good to me. Okay. Now what can I do to enhance it with the theory knowledge that I know? Right. Exactly. And when you're stuck, oh, yeah. I've got a, I've got a move I can make. Yeah, exactly. You have all these tricks in a bag and you can just like throw them out there when you need it. Exactly. They're, they're at your disposal whenever you require. And oh. I, 
that's that's the way it's kind of got to be. Some of my best arrangements have actually been just sitting down and thinking about my friends that will hear it and how they might feel when they receive the sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not that, thinking about the theory exactly. at all. Exactly. And it comes down to just your musical instincts and what you what you think would sound good. And that that's artistry. That's creativity. And that mm. has to come first. It has to come well, first. What was your first arrangement? Do you remember your very first like budding <laughs> arrangement where you thought, I'm gonna try and do something ambitious? Like what was oh, it? Yeah, it so it was actually for the Philharmonic. Honestly, I haven't arranged I didn't arrange in college. It was after college when I joined the Philharmonic when I was forced to arrange. Um, that, <laughs> <laughs> that I did um, a, a song called The Way by Ariana Grande it was our first pop song and um, and I was I had I was so theoretical with it that when it, it came out it felt very robotic and just felt yeah. very lifeless so I remember that feeling and remember I, I wanted to change that so I continued to grow as an arranger and try to trust my instincts more that's that's really good advice to people to trust your instincts and you are our last guest from last week Jen Jen Scott, also the same thing, trust your instincts when it comes to harmonization. It's in there. We are we are constantly a library that are receiving new books mm -hmm. all the time. Everything we see, everything we hear. And that's why Performance Feast is here, because we we are feeding ourselves. And, and so often as performers and arrangers and musicians, we don't really feed yeah. the beast. You know, we we right. expect ourselves to put out a lot, but we don't really sit and receive and, and feed. That's so true. That's such a great point. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, our, our, let's move on to another another video now. Um, I'm going to trade you tit for tat. This is one of my favorite groups um, that I think, you know, has made such an impact in not only pop music, uh, but also in jazz, um, doing a lot of vocalese work. Uh, people are very well familiar with this group, but I don't know if they're very, very familiar with a lot of their really deep jazz cuts. This is one of the modest, not so deep jazz cuts, but is a jazz cut nonetheless. It's um, it's a vocalese. So all, all of the things that you're hearing sung here, folks, are lyrics that have been put to original um, horn solos or piano solos, big in, in band band solos uh, that lyrics have been put to, and the vocalists are singing the lines that were actually originally played by instruments. This is Manhattan Transfer singing Four Brothers. Hey. Seagull, amongst others, all the time. Okay, it's a ring Yeah, I love this one. Take seed, cool it, cause the vision will be ready to show you some blowing. Rumping and stomping is a lot of fun. For all the crew blowing a horn. So set it down and listen, cause you don't know what you're missing, and we're ready to give you a showing. I'm moving and grooving, it just begun. For brothers who are blowing a horn. We got a little mess that you're gonna enjoy In the sense that in the fight So send in your piece of sharing If you ever had a can't forget it, it's time to relax You might as well admit it with the best that ever did it But in case you ain't just sure we know it We're gonna let you listen to us one by one For brothers who are blowing our horns How'd you do? Talking about you It's very nice to know That you have really taken time to listen to me blow Cause it sure I'm fun I'm blowing my horns Me baby I'm blowing Suiting it up and I hope you dig the sounds will make it more than any other Now I must go for it's time to listen to my other brother I think you should talk about me Better go and see A myth that you know's the one it very much to me Sure, that's the reason I've been blowing so snappily I don't know what you got, but it thrills me And I hope to have a lot, cause it puts me flowing first So baby, now if you'd like to take my other brother You're gonna have to turn the record over Hey, who you talking about? Say, who you talking about? Did he spit it? Did he brother, brother? In case I heard you talking about three, that's me. Please don't make you. How to do? How about you? How about everything for you? What do you say? I leave this jazz up to my sister. I did my long island style. I hope I put it down. I think I'll be in the woods on my bandit. If you know the trick of dance, I'm back to go to back. So the trick of dance, I dig you. Pretty baby, you will never know how much I really dig you. You have got me so excited about a good blow in my heart. The news getting around, we're really putting it down. Matter of fact, you know that you enjoyed it, and we wish we had the time to give you more. Thank you for the compliment. You told us we were better just as though we didn't know it. If we were the best from all the rest, we're in the modern school, we always play cool, we never play the fool. The hunkers and the squeakers might be seen at a show, but we're the club, and that's the way we blow. Get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. 
We appreciated making you mad, but we must ask you to apologize, cause after all, it's been a man. For brothers, for brothers, for brothers, for brothers, for brothers, sound like for, for brothers, for brothers, for brothers, for brothers, we're really only four. We like the blow with Queen and all how thank you fly and how and how can pass away. so good total pioneers and like tim hauser was such a jazz nerd like he had that radio show mm -hmm. in la for a long time and he knew everything about everything about everybody who'd ever recorded anything and he wasn't the strongest singer right, but right. he had such passion yeah yeah it's oh, un it's oh, undeniable right. yeah i did that chart back in college i mean we had uh, 12 voices at the time so you can imagine like really like tuning those chords i mean it was a tough chart to do and fast moving words yeah um, it's, it's the words different. yeah it's the words so wow that it was so good to just go like dive back into manhattan transfer they're so iconic in so many ways they totally are and you know what i saw them uh in minnesota the dakota um oh. it just last well a year ago february and i tell you they, they still have it and shell minton is just like yeah she sounds exactly the same. And this is 30 years ago. This recording oh, yeah. was 30 years ago from now. And, and you know, this just, there is such a great contributor to the vocal uh, fabric, the, the vocal uh, close harmony fabric that we, we would be remiss if we didn't include them tonight. Absolutely. Now we've got about 10 minutes left. Which okay. direction do you want to go in? Ooh. Um, is it time for all of me or is it yeah, time let's for, do the, let's do you want to do that? Yeah. Okay. I, I would love to do that. I want to show the fans here that oh. are who don't know about the Philharmonic or might not have heard about the Philharmonic exactly. You you're gonna fall in love with VJ, you're gonna fall in love with the group, and you're gonna see them also. They're the guests, by the way, VJ and the Philharmonic are the guests on our virtual show, uh the Great Northern Union virtual show that's May 21st. So watch us uh, for a bit more information on that. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be sure to be uh, pumping that a little bit more closer to the date, but you are gonna see these wonderful people contributing to, to the show. But I love this version of the song. There's just so much heart and spirit in it. Thanks, so love. you arranged this, right? I did, yeah, you're so sweet. I love every word that you're saying. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. <laughs> you're so welcome, <laughs> you know, so pal. Sweet. I adore you, so. Aw, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we're going to watch this and then we're going to talk a little bit about the arrangement and you can tell us a little bit about some of the, the things with the successes and challenges in this for you. But first, please, friends, let's just enjoy this really beautiful piece of music arranged by the one and only VJ Rosales and sung by the Philharmonic. Thank you. What would I do without your smart mouth? Drawn me in and you kicking me out. Got my head spinning, no kidding. I can't pin you down. What's going on in that beautiful mind? I'm on your magical mystery ride. And I'm so dizzy, don't know what hit me, but I'll be alright. My head's underwater, but I'm breathing fine. You're crazy and I'm out of my mind. Cause all of me. Your curves and all your edges, all 
your perfect imperfections Give your all to me I give my all to you You're my end and my beginning Even when I lose, I'm winning Cause I give you all Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed it. We have a bunch of projects and videos. Oh yeah. <laughs> <Still playing. laughs> um, but yeah, that's our arrangement of all of me. And it's yeah, when it when it hit a million views, I was floored. I was like, this is the first arrangement that I've gotten that off of. And so it's really that sweet. must just made your heart smile so much. Incredibly, yeah. Yeah. I just so. noticed how dark it's getting in here. I'm gonna put some lights on. <laughs> I think someone had a question like about prescribing um, soloist licks. Yes. And so just to answer that really quickly. Um, yeah, uh, I think Jim Jim asked that. Um, I don't, well, I do actually put that in the demo arrangement and then I will leave it up to the soloist to kind of interpret it however they please. So sometimes it changes and sometimes it stays the same. So, but I do add little licks just to make sure that we kind of keep the energy up and the arrangement interesting. So, um in, in some of the choices you made, you, you chose, uh, okay, I'm going to put some chord subs here, chord substitutions in here, and I'm going to do a bunch of doubling here. Uh, I'm going to just give a lot of space here. I'm going to do some short blast quarter note, yeah. you know, yeah, <laughs> here and create that space for something that's so flowy. So can you, can you tell us a little bit about how you charted the chart? Like in your mind, you're thinking, yeah. how do I want to map out the energy? And really, because arranging is about not only putting the chords in order, but it's about moving the energy and yeah. moving it up to that, that, that peak at the end. You want to tell us a little bit about yeah. your work? Yeah, just, I mean, in general, I, I go by the four bar rule, which is, and this is kind of something I made up myself, but in, in pop, every something happens every four bars to kind right. of keep the audience you know engaged and so i do that a lot with my arranging because so so just every four bars something is something new is introduced mm -hmm. and then i either change up the groove or change up the way that the backgrounds are working or i put a riff there and and so um that's kind of like my my structure every four bars i introduce something different and something exciting to keep the to keep the right. energy moving. yeah now now when we're doing that sort of thing um there's there's also we run the risk of of over arranging yes um, and and then we have to kill our darlings and that's a hard thing for an arranger to do <laughs> that's true right it's like oh yeah. i got all these great ideas and all these yeah. great shifts how often do you take a motif and say okay i've got to change it up every four bars but i'm going to change it up by taking an earlier motif amplifying it in a slight twisted way and put it later so that there's enough similarity for the ear to be drawn in but enough change 
Right, that's so interesting. Actually, I'm doing an arrangement right now for a summer academy thing that I do, and I'm finding that I'm doing too much. So there's too much reharm. There's too much. There's too right. much going on before bars. So I will take something that's familiar from the beginning and put it in the end, just for familiar familiarity and also just for consistency. Right. But also, I'll I'll learn to like, I guess the, the not the correct term, but like to dumb down the reharm a bit. So yeah. Right. It, you know what I mean? So it's just a little totally. bit more simple and a little bit more digestible. Yeah. I mean, keeping keeping the listener. I mean, it's one thing as the performer trying to keep the, the audience engaged or the mm -hmm. listener engaged because you're doing things vocally that enhance you. But as an arranger, um, we, we really do have a lot of say over whether or not that performance is going to be successful. True. Yeah, absolutely. And I completely agree with that. Um, and so with, with that being said, like I'll constantly review as a whole in context how the arrangement sounds and then I'll nitpick and, and edit as many times as I can until it's perfect because I'm perfectionist. Yeah, I find that it, it's really important to, uh, to do a lot, of, uh, a lot of editing. And yeah. I listen and I don't know about you, but I listen and I listen again. And I, you know, in, in my software that I use to... Uh, to, to capture what I'm arranging. I try it with a whole bunch of different instruments to see if it plays, like with right. all of the saxophones or all the bassoons. I just try all these instruments and if, if it doesn't really lock with a whole bunch of them, it's like, I don't think the voices can capture all of the colors that I hear in my head once those people yeah. get their voices on it. Absolutely. And then isn't it exciting to feel voices actually sing out loud a chart of yours for the first time and you hear it and you go, it worked. It's incredible. Yeah. And especially with all of me, like that's how I exactly I felt like when we sang it for the first time through, I was like, wow, this is this is amazing. So it's, it's a dream come true. It is a beautiful chart, VJ. You yeah. you 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 did a masterful job on that. Thank you, Mo. I appreciate it. And yeah. And if any of you guys want a copy of it, since you guys are here, just let me know. I'll just send it to you. Yeah. You know, OK, just, everybody. You heard it. Yeah, for free. Maybe take GNU's is going to have to take it on, too. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> VJ, what a joy it has been to spend the evening with you. Thank you. Uh, well, this very short evening, part of the <laughs> evening with you. I can't wait for us to do something like this again. Uh, thank you so very, very much for your time and your energy and for being the wonderful you that you are. Thank you, Mo. I appreciate it. And thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Yay, yay. VJ Rosales and the Philharmonic will be joining us on our show on, Mar on May 21st. So you can come back for a dose of that. And uh, we have episode nine coming up next week. Friends, come on back. Uh, Magic Voice has got some things to say to you. Take it away, Magic Voice. And again, thank you, VJ. Thank, thank you, so you VJ and Mo, for a great performance Love feast. You. You. Uh, I'd like to remind our audience to please take a moment to fill out the poll that I am posting for you right now. It's just five <laughs> questions. Um, I'd also like you to uh, follow us on Facebook and YouTube at the Great Northern Union and on Instagram and Twitter at GNU Sings. This series, again, is made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board, thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. This has been GNU Presents Performance Feast. Feed your mind and nourish your heart. And a happy Earth Day to everybody. <laughs>